Yo, yo, what up, my beautiful dowdies? How's everyone doing today? I'm your host, Fao, and let's talk about Ekaron. With Honka Starrel getting more characters, more supports, more sustainers, and of course, more DPSs, all the older characters are being tested. But one older character right now is not being tested at all. And that is, of course, going to be the DPS Ekaron. When Ekaron got released all the way in the beginning of 2.0, she was a force to be reckoned with. And she still is to this day. Her unique playstyle with not using energy shows time and time again that it is a very premium way of dealing damage. Damage, not worrying about energy regeneration. Ekron was such a good unit that without any signature supports, she was at the top of her game. She just used the Pela and maybe any other Nihility character extra that you had. Maybe it was a Welt, maybe it was a Black Swan, maybe it was a Silver Wolf. You can even get away with a Gwynaif and you know, any other real Nihility character just made Ekron a very good DPS. But now with the release of JQ, our Fox boy, she is on another level. And in this video, I really wanted to talk about what the position of Ekron is and what we can expect with her rerun, because I do suspect a rerun very soon. Is she still worth it? You know, what are her weaknesses, you know, her pros and cons, and what does Ekron provide for you for your account as a whole? And also comparing her to other DPSs that we have right now. So let's get straight into the video. Where does Acheron stand right now in Honkai Star Rail? Of course, with the release of Fei Xiao, Acheron did get tested because Fei Xiao is kind of the complete opposite from Acheron. She also uses the non-energy stacking playstyle, but she uses it with follow-up attack instead of debuffing. And the opposite is that she's single target and Acheron is, of course, AoE. Both of these characters kind of do their AoE or their single target the best, right? I think Acheron right now is the best AoE damage dealer and Fei Xiao is the best single target damage dealer. Now, if you would take their best setup, so Akron would get the best setup with JQ, Aventurine plus Pela, and Fei Xiao will go for Topaz, Robin, and Aventurine as well right now. Funny enough that Aventurine is both in this team, shows what promising his rerun is going to give. Aventurine is a very, very good unit to start thinking about picking up. Now, of course, Acheron's team is not fully, fully completed yet, in my opinion. Of course, Pela is a unit that we can swap out a little bit. We can or put Silverwolf in there, or you can maybe do some other cool stuff. So even Acheron, technically speaking, is not fully completed yet. I do think that Pela is the best option because it really shines with her AoE damage dealing, right? The AoE defense shred from Pela on top of then the vulnerability shred from Jack and then both of them just battering and eventually keeping the team alive and also applying the debuff crit damage and blah 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 right it is very good that team setup just very straightforward and just very smooth that setup however i do think when we put Feisha with her best setup and Akron with her best setup and they would both do moc i do actually think that Feisha wins right now Feisha's team composition and her whole position that she's in right now is actually going to deal more DPS. So I do think, in my opinion, that Fei Xiao is the better DPSer right now. But what makes Acheron so powerful? Even though that technically speaking, she would lose damage numbers wise if they would go head on head, Acheron is just overall very good and very well structured. Fei Xiao does fall off in pure fiction. Acheron has that covered as well. And Acheron has Apocalyptic Shadow covered as well. Even though Fei Xiao is maybe better there and also better in MOC, Acheron can clear anything, no questions asked. And she's doing this without three other premium units. Fei Xiao is, of course, clearing everything with three premium units. We have to take that in consideration as well. Acheron only has JQ and Aventurine. And in my opinion, I even think that Aventurine is not even a proper unit for Acheron. That's what I think. Aventurine is good, and that shows just how strong Aventurine is. You know, the, the, the overall account value that he can provide. He works with Acheron, and he's very strong with Acheron. But I don't think that Aventurine is actually a sustainer for Acheron. If we actually take a step back and really go in depth on what Aventurine provides, I think that Acheron can actually get a way better signature sustainer. So this means, in my opinion, that Acheron actually loses out on two premium signature units, with Fei Xiao having actually everything built for her. And I think, do think that why is she the best one right now? Even Firefly, right? Firefly is also a very strong unit. And Firefly has Ron May. And that's the real only good premium unit that she has right now. Of course, when Lingxia comes out, 
technically speaking, that would be the premium five-star break sustainer. Even though that I think Gallagher can be more skill point efficient and better for Firefly, technically speaking, Lingsha would be the number one. But then we still have Harmony Trailblazer. The Harmony Trailblazer is a free unit. And there's probably a very big chance that that is also going to get a limited five-star version when we're starting to reach 3.0. So Acheron is soon actually... At the top of her game, minus two limited five-star signature units. And both Firefly and Fei Xiao have more, when Lingxia comes out, to their kits, right? To their whole playstyle, they have a way better combination of team building. And we all know how much team building and proper team setups can do for a specific DPS. And Ekron is still managing to keep up. Even when we would have taken away JQ. Let's imagine a world where JQ never got released last patch. Akron would have still been a very good unit. So I do think that we have to take in consideration that Akron is a different beast. Akron is a different type of damage dealing. When we do get a signature sustainer, and when we do get that other nihility character or that second supportive de-shred vulnerability, whatever it might be, right? I do think defense shred would be very good. Just a five-star Pela because... JQ is, of course, with vulnerability. So if a Pela would get a five-star limited version with even more, like, I don't know, whatever they're going to think, right? I think that Ekeron will always be creeping around the corner of being the best in the game. And I actually think that she is the best damage dealer in the game, but she can just not show it yet. And that is why Ekeron will always be the best DPS in the game, I think. Unless a new Buried <laughs> is going to spawn in Star Rail. But I think this is always something to consider for newer players and for veterans. The reason why Ekeron is not number one right now is because she literally is unable to perform because her supportive units are not existed yet. It's the same concept that I have for DOT. DOT, so let's take Kafka as an example there. Of course, Kafka is the main damage dealer for DOT. The reason why DOT is performing way worse than all the other compositions is because they have minus two limited five-star characters. Yes, they have Ho-Ho and Robin. Still to this day, I refuse to believe that we have to settle for Ho-Ho as a sustainer for DOT. It is a very good one with energy and attack percentage, but I more think that Ho-Ho is for the energy giving hyper carries like Dill, Jing Liu, you know, Argenti. That is really what Ho-Ho is built for. DOT is, of course, scaling with attack percentage, so Ho-Ho works with that. Same as Aventurine, works with Acheron very well, but they're not made for that. So this concept of DPSing and just character creation and building is something we really have to take consideration in Honkai Star Rail. This is why Acheron is secretly the best DPS that we have right now, but she is not able to outperform or outdamage the other ones, or Fei Xiao right now, because she is winning with supports. So, if there's going to be an Ekron rerun, guys, and I'm starting to speculate that a reason why Rappa, I made a previous video about that, I'm starting to speculate a crazy rerun why Rappa is only a singular new character, because Ekron is going to be rerun with her. And Hoyover's nose. Ekoron is going to get a lot of summons and sales. It's going to give more money probably even than Rappa. Let's be honest here. The popularity of Ekoron. You guys remember, don't forget, her first banner, her sales were over 100 million in like, what was it, the first month or the first few weeks? It was crazy. Now, you guys have to understand, Ekoron's Eidolons are also very good. So not only are newer players going to benefit from getting Ekoron, veterans or people that already have Ekoron probably maybe want to take it to the next level. Level, get a light cone, get a few Eidolons, you know, whatever it might be. Because Ekeron is such a worth it character to keep investing in is because she is still the top of her game, even without minus limited five-star characters. So Rappa as a newer character is just getting less popular. It's the same thing what they did with Firefly and Run May. When Firefly and Run May got a banner, we all know why Argenti was on there. Let's be honest. Let's not lie to ourselves. The Jade and Argenti banner, it was inevitable for it not to be, you know, just not a cash grab because Firefly and Run May were so incredibly valuable with Gallagher on it as well. That banner was god tier, right? There was no way that not 80% of the player base was just gonna go invest on that banner it was it was bound to happen so that's why they put argenti and jade because no one cared you know of course a few people still will but the majority will gonna go for the other one so 
no one's going to have tickets. So whoever knows, okay, they're not going to have tickets right now. Let's just put a rerun there that no one really cares about anymore. Of course, that's going to be Argenti. Hashtag justice for Argenti. But it is what it is. So now, I'm starting to think with Rappa coming up. There are going to probably be some very interesting rerun characters that are very anticipated. Which is going to be probably, again, Aventurine and Acheron. Those two are so anticipated, are such cool characters, and are key characters for a lot of compositions, that people are probably just going to go for those instead of the Rappa character and whatever she might do. Now, of course, Rappa might be crazy. We don't know yet. We don't know what she's going to do. Yet again, she's Erudition. So Erudition, in general, is always going to be something they use with cool units, right? Look at Jade Argenti, both Erudition with the Firefly Run May. So I hope that Rappa breaks this curse of being a valuable Eurydition character, but it has been shown in the past that they know what they're doing. They are playing a psychological game and they're probably going to do some cool reruns there. And that might be Acheron or Aventurine or both of them, you know? We don't know what they're going to do yet. That might be a very big possibility. Acheron is actually kind of a too strong character in Honkai Star Rail. And that's so funny to see of how she's structured. I think the moment they revealed her not using energy, it was done so. I think all the characters right now that use energy are just two steps behind because Ekron just ignores that, right? It is so incredibly valuable to not rely on energy. It is so good, guys. Look at Fei Xiao with the follow-up attacks. It goes crazy fast with the energy charge and Ekron does it with debuffing. And that's why Ekron is a very interesting Nihility character because Nihility is supposed to be around debuffing right now of course kafka the other counterpart with lightning nihility focuses on dot's and acheron really focuses on applying debuffs on the enemy and i do think that that is a very interesting composition it's the only composition that we have right now it's an archetype in the game that is only being used by acheron if you take follow attack for an example we have facial ratio and then, of course, Topaz and whatever. Those are follow-up attack synergistic characters. But we have two sub-genres, right? We have the counterplay style with Yunli and Clara. And then we have the HP taking with Jade and Blade. It's all subcategories within one category. But debuffing is only run or only existing because Acheron is just in the game. If Acheron was not in the game, Nihility would have probably just been around DOT more or maybe some universe with like wealth and stuff you know like just some sort of weird small category in there still but it's the same thing with all destruction characters or hunt characters right they all have like different types of ways they play we have the hyper carries with zayla dill jing liu we have break you know with firefly boot hill so there's a lot of different ways to play hunker style but the only way to play debuffing is acheron so acheron is so different on another level that she just creates a whole new playstyle on her own and she has less supportive units that help her with that playstyle and she's still performing on a top level and she is universal clearing everything and that's why she is technically in my opinion the best dps but yet again what i've saying before she cannot be the best DPS because other DPSs, Fei Xiao, are doing more consistent damage because of the supports. And this is a very interesting thing to see in Hanka Staro. And I wonder how long this is going to be a thing, right? How long Ekron will just be at the top? If she's ever going to be a little bit worse than maybe other upcoming DPSs? Or if she's always going to be staying there? Because the moment new Nihility characters come out, it is always going to be like, oh, is this now going to be a new DOT character? Or just, again, going to help Ekron just being juiced up again, right? With some more steroids for her composition. People that own Ekron can also maybe stand behind this argument because there's, of course, a lot of, you know, the Gahanka Star community or Gacha as a whole, there's, a lot, of course, a lot of people that always want to be the best or, like, they want to flex with their characters and stats, right? People that own Ekron are just flexing even though that other people are using better units, technically, right? Or using a better team composition. But they're still clearing stuff and they can still show off how Ekron how strong their character is, right? I, I, I'm a Dill main, I would say. Look, I like DOT and I like Dill, but if I have one character that really like hyper carry strong, it would be Dill. And I cannot flex as much as Acheron mains can. I have a very good free-to-play Dill, decent stats on it, but he will just never reach that, that strength or that level that Acheron has right now. It's just impossible. There are a lot of like signature characters right now that bring other compositions up 
because of their existence, which are going to be characters like Ron May, Robin, right? All of those characters, Acheron also doesn't care about. Acheron is yet again showing dominance here because we all know how broken Ron May is and how easy to use and whatever, and we all know how strong Robin can be in this right setup. Acheron literally spits in their faces, right? She, she says, cool, you know, you guys are broken. I'm that strong. I don't need you guys. Let my composition just, you know, I need two naility characters. <laughs> bye bye, guys, right? Like, she is so, like, nice to build with that as well. Of course, she does need crit rate, crit damage, and that is the only, like, real downside, in my opinion, of Acheron and just the composition because she needs a lot of investment in that way, right? Do you need a good crit ratio? You do need a lot of crit damage, and you just need a good ratio for her actually to just be do consistent damage. And that is also another reason why she seems worse than that she is because free-to-play players or players that are just not relic farming enough or just are unlucky are always looking like their character is worse like look at firefly right with the break effect it is so easy to build break then firefly looks maybe stronger because she just has more stats and she gets them easier well, Acheron, if she actually would get a good ratio, she would already out damage that, right? So there's a lot of different ways here why Acheron just shows to be at the top of the game with so many like penalties around her. And that's, what, that's why I will say that Acheron is the best DPS technically right now, but she just did not have the resources to show it. Now, of course, for the people that don't know, I don't own Firefly, Feishao or Acheron. So in my position, I of course cannot go into like crazy depth going over the three because I do think that those three are like the top dogs right now. And I've seen of course a lot of other people using a lot of cool compositions and bales and whatever. And I can clearly see that why they're just better than the rest right now. But with the involvement of Honkai Star Rail, there's always a possibility of all of a sudden a forgotten character to just be at the top of the game again. I've been saying this for a long time already. The energy support that we need will bring all other characters up that need it. So if Acheron gets another Nihility limited 5 star, then I think that she'll be at the top of her game. So that's what I would like to know how you guys are viewing this. You know, people that do have Feishao, of course, and Acheron and Firefly, mostly Acheron. How are you guys going at this, you know? Can you guys tell the difference between team compositions and builds and whatever? We'd love to hear what you guys think about who the best DPS is in the game right now and why that would be. And would also like to hear what, you, what your, your setups are, right? Because Acheron also changes her gameplay a lot with certain Eidolons. And if you then all of a sudden have E2, then you can do minus one Nihility character. And that opens up a lot of doors for Acheron to be even more broken, right? And I do think that Fei Xiao and Firefly have a little bit of the same boat, especially Firefly with her E2, you know, and E1 as well. Those are so big, significant upgrades that these DPSs are going to change drastically with those Eidolons. They're so much gameplay change within these DPSs as well. And I would just love to hear what you guys think of the overall PS value that we have in the game right now. Let me also know if you're going to save for Acheron, you know, if you are also suspecting a little bit of an Acheron rerun, if you're going to go for her then, if you pulled JQ for her, you know, if you're that dedicated, I would love to hear all your takes and stories on this. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, of course, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. It means the world to me if you could do that. Make sure to join the Discord. We're trying to grow the community even further. And if you want to support the channel even further, then of course, become a member. I love you all and I'll see everyone in the next video. Take care. Peace.